is a dimension. My name is Lana, and today I will share with you the topic: how the art, thank you, how the art shapes our world. And talking about the art, uh, let me start uh, by visualizing. Uh, and for this, uh, let me to ask you to close your eyes for a few seconds and imagine that you are looking at Michelangelo's uh, David or at a starry night by Van Gogh or uh, you are listening some great symphony, well-known and world-known symphony or you are remembering the book which was very influential or on your life. Something that sparkles inside of you, right? And some emotions are caused by remembering to this feeling, right? And now raise your hand if such emotions have started into you or you have experienced such emotions. For me personally, yes all the time and thank you uh, i'm looking or remembering the books which was influential on my life always causes this kind of emotions now please let's raise the hand who thinks that art is not created just to rise and cause some kind of emotions but something more huge and important and crucial is standing behind this emotion. Well, great, thank you. And congratulations, because I consider, an objectivist philosophy considers that you know the true meaning of art. Now let's start and share some deep topics. And before, uh, we move on, let me share you why I'm connected and how I'm connected to art. After that, let's discuss the meaning of art and connection of art with reason, because at least we are on Reason Fest right now. And uh, let's talk about the art as a hammer to shape our world. If you ask someone what's their hobby, Usually, the answer is reading the books, right? In my case, it was writing books. And this is my first book. Uh, it's called Ruth. And uh, this book uh, is about the girl who tries to shape her own life. And during this process, he, she is struggling and she has different kinds of battles inner battles, outer battles, and sometimes the whole world is against her. And in such circumstances, she tries to do her best. And ladies and gentlemen, we are accompanied by the wind. <laughs> yes. Uh, now let me show, and this book uh, is available in, only in Georgian right now, and uh, online also. Now let's move to the next book. Uh, it's called The Evil Son of Diego. Uh, Diego actually is a girl, and um, uh, the book is about a girl and a boy who were punished because they were different thinkers. What does this mean and how they were punished and by whom the whole book is about? And my third and the last book, which uh, is called Jane Has Disappeared, is about the Jane, who was a very smart girl, and uh, the whole focus on governmental authorities and uh, their eyes uh, were on her, because all the time she was discovering something new and she was uh, conducting too many times space trips also. And uh, once she received uh, some strange signals from uh, space and she decided to discover this new planet. But authorities were again to discover this and she planned... Oh, thank you. And she planned it secretly she went to discover this new planet 
and during this journey she was disappeared. And the book said, uh, says and tell, uh, tells the whole story what uh, happened next. So this is my connection to art. I have experienced myself the influence of art. Now let's start uh, and go a little bit deeper and to say and mention that between five branches, which is metaphysics, epistemology, ethics and politics, the last, the fifth branch is aesthetics. In other words, the philosophy of art. Now let's see what kind of questions this uh, branch and especially ethics rise. What is art? What is its role in man's life? And by what standards should an artwork be judged? Well, um, if you think that, and as I uh, saw, most of you raised your hands when we say, uh, said that, uh, art doesn't have the only meaning to express some emotions, but something deeper and something huge we can find between the art. This is the true meaning of art, which means that art does have a purpose, which is rational, worldly, practical purpose, and we have daily connection to it. And art, art fulfills an essential need of man's life. Not a material need, but a spiritual need. And art was called the fuel of spirit. This is my favorite definition of art. Now let's see what is the root itself of uh, man's uh, need. Well, man's need for art lies in the truth that man is a conceptual human being, which automatically needs, uh, means that conceptual being needs to be guided by philosophy. And as I mentioned, philosophy art of art lies in aesthetics. Let me share a uh, very um, unique and uh, the, uh, which expresses the whole idea of art by herself, by Ayn Rand, that art is very needed for men, not for their physical survival, but for their spiritual survival also. And why? The most I like in objectivism, and especially um, in this part, is that nothing stops on uh, some statement. We should always ask why and what's next? What kind of influence does this have on my life? Well, uh, each activity and each action which is done by the person includes two main uh, directions. First of them is that everyone should know the nature of his activity and also to know philosophical contest, which includes three main directions. Why the activity is proper, how it relates to his code of values and how these values relate to reality. Let's take some examples. Let's take an architect or sculptor who builds, uh, in first case, buildings, and in second case, uh, some monuments or something uh, that sculptors do, and also a doctor. And let's uh, answer to these questions. Why the activity is proper? Why they are doing their job? They all the time have uh, their own reason why they are doing something and also how it relates to his code of values in case of doctor his code of value is that they want to survive to save someone's life in case of architect they want to build something that expresses their inner space and the same is in sculptor's case and these values is relate to reality because expressing something in our way 
automatically means that we are creating the reality. Now we can discuss the main meaning of art. And as our previous uh, speaker asked, and I answered it, uh, the question, what is art, is this meaning, this definition. Art is a selective recreation of reality according to an artist's metaphysical value judgments. Here are three main points. Let's start from the third one, value judgment. Uh, I mentioned in previous slides that value judgment is how my and why my activity is proper and why I'm doing such things. So this is value judgment. Now let's uh, define recreation of reality. Recreation means this, that this is the way I see the reality. This is the tool, this is uh, the uh, way also how I express and create my reality. Reality is all already exists, but from my point of view, expressed reality is recreated reality. And why selective? Sometimes people are arguing if artist is very smart and he can uh, recreate reality, it means that he can recreate everything around him, which is not true. Artists are selecting one kind of reality they can recreate. There is no man who can recreate all the sphere uh, between and among and um, in the circle of himself. So that's why it's selective. No one can cover everything. We all choose something and in case of artists, they are creating their reality in a selective way. That's why, because of this recreation, artists are the closest to become a god. Of course, uh, god is not a case of belief. Uh, it's a synonym of uh, some creator in this case. Because each artist is recreating and doing their own way, expressing their own way, how they want to see the world, which is uh, different from uh, the original one. Well, while talking uh, about, um, about the uh, art, we, it is impossible not to talk about uh, the role of philosophy in art, a romantic literature. And this is one of the uh, most interesting and intriguing moment also, uh, because uh, we have this kind of definition why exactly romanticism is very close to art and why talking while talking uh, about art it is very important to talk about romanticism also uh, because romanticism as ayn rand described and as ayn rand uh, defined is the greatest achievement in art history uh, because it's based on recognition and because it's based on conscious mind of man while we are talking about romanticism and literature, there um, uh, should be emphasized that the meaning of plot and uh, the uh, importance of plot is a very crucial moment. Because plot is a progression of logically connected events. Without these logically connected events, it is impossible to describe the character. And despite, to achieve goals is not given automatically, of course. So writer's work is to show men struggling for his goals against antagonistic forces. Now, let me ask to you, audience, uh, after reading this statement, which character do you remember? that they are struggling, they have goals, and they have their own way to achieve these goals. 
Yes, please. Do we have another mic? Okay, I will give you mine. Um, so the character, um, I guess an overview would be the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. So it could be any character that encompasses the hero's journey. And there's many, there's many characters. Too many characters are coming into mind, right? Yes. Can you just name one or two? Um, the one I was talking to my friend earlier about, um, there's a movie in the 90s called The Last Unicorn. Oh. It came out in 1986. Or something like that. Um, that's a good example of the hero's journey. It's, it's about a, a unicorn that leaves it's the last unicorn that leaves its, its forest on a journey to find the other unicorn and has, has to fight this big raging bull. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other ideas? Remembering. Oh. Yes. Um, and Dr. Lecce. I, I think I'd uh, put in a, a call for Luke Skywalker. Star oh. Wars. I know it's not, not the most sophisticated, but he, I think, embodies the hero Shermie better than anybody else, resembles the right values and has some rather intimidating opponents that he overcomes. Very much, Milio. Thank you, because I'm a big fan of Skywalker also, and I, I think that we should talk a little bit more about this. Thanks. Yes, please. Oh. So uh, when reading about this, uh, the one that comes to my mind is the main female character in the painting of famous Eugène Delacroix, La Liberté du Dans le Peuple, or you, you know as, you know also as Liber Liberty Guide the People, with, with the female character carrying the French, the, the French flag. Yeah. yeah. It's very clear for me that she is. Uh, she wants to reach some goal. Exactly. And thank you. It was a really great answer. I guess that all of us remember this uh, painting with very colorful colors, vivid colors. Well, thank you. Yes, definitely without goal, without uh, their aim, and without knowing where they, are, uh, they want to go, without these characters cannot survive and cannot live much. Well, conflict, which can be inner conflict, outer conflict, or conflict against someone or something, is what characters made themselves. Sometimes when we are talking about art, and especially when we are talking about literature, Maybe you have heard that literature is the source, the tool to escape from reality. How many of you have heard about this statement? Yes, unfortunately me also. But let's see, is it, well, uh, we cannot say is it true or not, but let's discuss. And let me uh, just state Ayn Rand's words about this topic. If literature and art is the source of escapement from reality instead of creating and recreating it, then, and she gives too many examples and very hard touching examples to analyze and understand that it's not escaping from reality, then medicine is escaping from disease, life from death, and agriculture from hunger instead of creating good being and good environment and knowledge from ignorance and ambition from sloth. So after realizing and reading all these and combined to my values, I now definitely know that literature is the source of creating something in my way instead of escape from reality. Also, let me combine romanticism and literature 
and let's talk in a few words about Romantic Manifesto, a book which is written by Ayn Rand, and I highly recommend to read it. But before you do this, let me share three key points why you should know this book and why you should be familiar with these ideas. Uh, because it express artist philosophy and uh, here is uh, described how uh, and what kind of understanding and shaping of world is able by uh, doing this art in a different way. Second one here is described also the purpose of art. I've already shared in a few words. And the last one here is mentioned artistic freedom and the meaning and importance of artistic uh, freedom is described in this book. Okay, while we are talking about um, artistic freedom and my few slides were about literature and romanticism, maybe we, we think, maybe not, but still we think that uh, literature is the main uh, direction of art or as it was mentioned, painting. How many of you think that it's true? That art mainly contains only literature and, um, and painting? Well, uh, to be honest, I was one of them who thought that it, it, they are main directions. But for now, of course, I know that they are not the only directions and dimensions of uh, art. So we can find it in different directions also and in a various forms uh, such as architecture, music, dance, sculpture and so on. The main point and main value how we judge and how we identify that this is true art is that it's a source of expression and it recreates the reality. Now let me show you the example that art is not limited. But before I show this, uh, let me ask you, which examples would you bring to demonstrate that art is not only literature and only painting? It would be very interesting from you. Any suggestions? Okay, great. Cinema or movies? Yes, thank you for your answer, but it's a little bit connected also to books, to writing, to literature. Yes, please. Could I just, I'll just speak very loud. Yes. I think um, sculpture is a good example. And I do think narrative. I think narrative is perhaps like the most important part of all art, music, etc. But you can tell a story without words. And I think that sculpture and all forms of art, if it's good art, or if it's like objectivist art, do that. Yes, thank you. Yes, and let me share uh, one, one of examples. Sydney Opera House. I have not been there uh, yet, but hope I will see it by myself in person. So, as you mentioned, and yes, you mentioned right, this is the way of expression. But in this case, the artist, architect, wanted to express not only something that was his mind, but also this was the way how he was seeing the new world. Before him, there was no idea how to shape a building in a very different manner. So this is as an example, and also I can share you with uh, Zaha Hadid's uh, architectural artworks and masterpieces. Yes, they are, how to say, uh, they, they are really occupying your mind seeing the, her artworks. So it's the different um, ideas and it's the different kind of expression which makes you wow. This is how they see the world and how they are creating the world. 
Okay, to combine all of this literature, painting, and architecture, and we also have well-known um, and uh, worldwide known symphonies from uh, different composers. Why do we need art is already uh, answered because it allows individuals to connect with their emotions and to go for their desires and also deepest values. Without values, just emotions are not uh, okay, is not okay from objectivist perspective, but in connection with values, now it's completely okay. Well, now let me ask you a question. We all agreed, maybe not fully and completely, but art has very important and crucial influential um, character and it, uh, the role of art is uh, huge in human life. Can we use art as a source, uh, as a source of propaganda? Raise your hand if you think that, yes, okay, we can use it as a propaganda. Too many hands, I see. But I'm sure that you think that in a good way propaganda, right? And you don't think that something bad or when evil appears or something, some Marxist propaganda or something, uh, I want to be sure, <laughs> right? Well, to be honest, if we have good desire and we have good goals to use art as a propaganda for a good things to do, still we don't have the right to use it as a propaganda or as a didact didactic work because there is no way, can we imagine that one day Pablo Picasso said that I want to shape my world and express my uh, human beings uh, with the triangles and rectangles and their faces instead of round. Let me uh, be uh, triangle faces, for example. And someone said, no, it's impossible. You should do right this, right? We, uh, otherwise, we do not have Picasso today, right? So we cannot and we should not use art as a didactic. And also, and more important question, uh, is not a textbook or a propaganda vehicle. And as I promised uh, to one of our um, uh, participants, let's see and let's guess uh, this uh, painting. Uh, do you recognize this? Yes, yes Guernica Picasso is absolutely right answer. Well, you will ask me if we have not right, we don't have right to use art as a propaganda, why are you showing us this, well, propaganda uh, painting? I would answer you that it's not a propaganda case. It's just a message which includes political message. And here comes, uh, and uh, this painting was created after the uh, civil war uh, in uh, uh, civil war, and uh, the expression of it is very tragic. Yes, and that's why it's considering and contains uh, political messages, uh, how terrible the war is. Can anyone say, and it's very okay for me, and it's very okay from objectivist perspective, but can anyone from our audience say, then what is the difference between propaganda and this I'm calling political message? Is there a, anyone? Okay. I'm waiting for your answer because it's very, very important. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any difference. I think anything that is visual is art because when our eyeballs see it, it creates a narrative in our brain and it connects to our subconscious. And that's uh, my experience. Um, I'm an artist that works in symbolism, and um, anything can be a symbol, anything is art, if you can see it, it's art. 
and consequently it's a propaganda, right? If there is no difference for you. Well, let me answer. Thank you for your answer and uh, in reality, their roads never crossed because propaganda is something which is planned, which needs daily work, even it is projected to a bright future and good vision. And despite this propaganda, political message is something that stands on artistic freedom. When artist decides what he decides and in which manner he decides to express his attitude, his um, thoughts about the ongoing processes, it's an artistic freedom and he expresses. But propaganda always contains something which is not based on freedom or uh, artist's vision. It's just planned, such as we have everyday plans and anything. Main point and main line is between artistic freedom, when, how, or what he wants he express. Yes, and in case of propaganda, let me sum up, is he doesn't have, artist doesn't have such kind of uh, freedom. Well, let's go a little bit to a conclusion and conclude that art is designed for man's sake. Art, if art was designed just for art's sake, it would just splash some emotions inside us and our hearts were beating too much and it would end it there. But no, art, as we saw, has influential uh, meaning on our lives. That's why it's designed for men's sake. And when I was working on, on this topic, um, I just um, uh, read and it was uh, very interesting for me and let me share that. Uh, uh, Fritz Lang, have you heard this name? Maybe yes, maybe not. But he was the guy who directed uh, Die Nibelungen, uh, this kind of film, which is, by the way, very interesting and one of the ancient films, we can say. And uh, this Fritz Lang uh, was a director and on his um, uh, doors to his cabinet was uh, written during um, directing this uh, film that nothing in this film is accidental. We can address exactly the same to art. Nothing in art is accidental. And despite everything in art we see, and as we agreed, it's um, a, a vision of uh, artists is just planned and they want to express, to recreate their own world. And last but not least, we can conclude that art is not a mirror to reflect reality, but a hammer to shape our reality. And maybe Georgians know this film, which is called An Unusual Exhibition where the story is about an artist, the older guy is an artist sculpture, and he has a huge stone, um, a rectangle stone, and he has no idea what kind of sculpting um, person or someone uh, should be the uh, most uh, fitted um, for this uh, stone. And in the end, his apprentice, which is this uh, little boy, he was granted to use the stone and to shape anything he wanted. And in the very last scene, uh, I guess, can we play this? Maybe it doesn't have a sound. When he was, yes. Yes. He's very excited that he was allowed to sculpt something he wants, to express his own feelings and minds uh, to we are sculpting something from this stone. That's why he was so, so much excited. And the last words of him is that 
I will shave from this stone and film is stopped here. So it means that everyone can sculpt anything uh, who watches this movie, or we can sculpt anything we desire. So I wish you to uh, have as much as possible influence of art on your life. Because uh, when art is influential, it means that we feel, we express, and we know the true meaning of art. And this is the one way to express our inner space, inner values, and to be more interesting and more attractive for the universe. So I wish you good luck on this uh, interesting journey and be as excited as this little boy was because life is that huge stone which is given to us to shape our own values. Thank you for your attention.